Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at brushless motor timing. We're gonna be answering questions such as, if you don't know exactly what to set your electronic speed control for timing, where should you start? And then for the avid performance enthusiast, if you're looking for extra performance, what should you typically expect to gain and is it worth it? Those are the questions that we're gonna be going through here in this video. Now to kick things off, whether you're operating a censored motor or a sensorless motor, odds are your electronic speed control is going to switch into sensorless mode once that motor gets up and begins to start running. What's important here is that the ESC is not using a fixed amount of timing when that brushless motor is at speed. What it's actually doing is utilizing a range of different types of timing that it can apply depending on the conditions that your motor is running at. And this is true for an instantaneous moment in time. It is constantly changing the timing as your motor is experiencing different throttle positions, different load conditions, and different RPM. Those are just a few of the factors that go into the computation of what the ESC is gonna determine is the best timing for your exact setup in that exact moment. The reason why this is important is because we can adjust the timings that we have within our brushless speed control. All we do is we hook up our speed control to our computer or to a different programming device and we can select different values of timing for our brushless motor. Now when selecting timing on this Castle electronic speed control, what we're ultimately doing is selecting a range of values that that ESC is going to be allowed to operate in when it comes to timing specifically. If we select the low value here, it's going to operate in a range of timings that is going to be on the low end of the threshold. Now flipping to the opposite end of the spectrum, if we go for a high amount of timing here, what the electronic speed control is going to do is operate with values of timing that's going to be on the high end of the range. All we're doing here is selecting the range and not necessarily the exact timing value as you would expect in degrees of timing. Let me know in the comment section below if you operate the majority of your setups using either low moderate or high amounts of timing. For this video, what I want to do is dive into a bunch of different dynos that I've run to really ultimately understand the performance that we're getting and then be able to answer the question as to what kind of timing should we set our radio control vehicles to. Let's now look at performance gains that we get from a setup. Here we're taking a look at three different setups that I have, and the very first one that we're gonna discuss deals with an Outrunner. This is an 850 kV Outrunner. It actually operates on 3S LiPo. However, what I've done here is connected it to a power supply so that we can get smooth and consistent power delivery throughout the entire duration of the run as long as I have this connected. This is a good place to start, and then from here I did other types of dynos, and we'll get into those when we come across them. The very first thing to look at within this chart is that on the very top we have low timing values and on the bottom there we have the high timing values. Only two lines of information for every motor setup that we have run. What I've actually done is collected five different data samples in order to average it out for each one of these tests. Now the data that's the most important here is the current that we're gonna be taking a look at as well as the RPM of the motor. Then we can explain some of the other parameters and how that works for us. The very first line here, we're using low timing, we get about 32.02 amps versus about 32.67 amps used on high timing. RPM jumps from 78.74 up to 79.26. Now, what's unique here is that the motor efficiency doesn't really change too much. It goes from 73.4 to 73.1. For pretty much everybody, no one's gonna really see a difference in this drop of motor efficiency. It's pretty well negligible. Now, when we take a look at the percentage difference there, the per first value of percentage difference representing 2.04 is the change that we're getting in the amount of current. And then the second value of percent difference there is the jump that we're going to see in the RPM. You can see that it's a very small bump in RPM for a relatively small bump in current. We have a ratio difference there of 3.1. Let's take a look at the second item here, the second motor. This is an inrunner and it is of a very low KV at 
50. Generally, these motors operate on a high amount of voltage and a low amount of current. What I've done is I've actually done the opposite. I ran it on a high amount of current and a very low amount of voltage. So what you're going to see is low amounts of efficiency coming out of this. Well, let's see how timing actually affects this brushless motor. So here we have the current going from 41.92 and jumping up to 44.53 amps. Motor speed goes from 77.47 and jumps up to 78.26. Ultimately, we see the efficiency drop from 64% to about 62%, pretty well, not that big of a deal. And then we see the percentage difference going from 6.23, this is the bump that we have in current, and then a bump of 1.02% for our motor speed. This is a ratio of 6.1 when we look at the bump in current divided by the bump or increase of motor RPM. That's quite substantial and tells us that we're actually getting a lot more current for a little bit of RPM. Now the third dyno here is gonna give us a lot of good information. There's a lot of things going on here, so let's talk through it. So the very first thing to pay attention to is of course our current. Our current goes from on low timing from 98 amps and jumps up to 105 amps when we have the high timing value there. When we go from low timing for our motor RPM, we're gonna see 34,488 RPM, and this jumps up to 34,960 RPM when we have high amounts of timing. So you can see that the percentage difference in current, we're bumping up by 7.14%, but when it comes to RPM, we're only gonna be jumping up about 1.37%. Now, I don't have mechanical power output, and thus I'm not gonna have efficiency because I don't have that, because I'm not able to measure the torque on this EDF. So now that we have that data, I really had to think exactly how we're going to use it and put it into perspective for us to really understand what's going on here. The chart on the right side represents those two systems, running on a 1400 kV motor versus a 1500 kV motor. Essentially what we're seeing is that we get RPM of 46,000 833 on our 10S 1400 kV setup. And then when we bump up to that 1500 kV setup, we get 50,000 RPM. Now the big thing here is we go from 108 amps to jumping up to 128 amps pulled from our setups. This means that the percentage difference in current is going up by 18.5% and the amount of RPM that we get out of the system is jumping up by 6.8%. The 6.8% is really healthy and represents a good amount of RPM and power output that we're getting from this system. Now this is where I really had to think about what's going on here because if you were to just take an EDF and run it up, especially on the low amount of RPM, when you're considering zero to 10,000 RPM, you're really not getting that much power output. Even though there's a difference of 10,000 RPM, it makes hardly a difference when you're really considering the amount of power output that that motor is delivering. This is gonna affect how fast we travel in the air, or if this was a radio control car, how fast we travel on the ground. Now, when you go from 35,000 RPM to 37,000 RPM, that's quite a big bump in power. And even this example, going from 46,000 RPM to 50,000 RPM, that's quite a large and significant bump in RPM. Now, let's take a look at the ratio of performance that we get from each one of these setups. We're gonna compare the low versus the high timing, and we're gonna compare that setup against against the low KV to high KV upgrade. So we're considering the 1400 KV to a 1500 KV upgrade on our 10S setup. When we look at that 10S setup, we're seeing a ratio of 2.7. That means that the amount of current is jumping up 2.7 times more than the amount of RPM. When we compare that against the other setup, where we're jumping from low timing to high timing, we get a ratio of 5.2. What this is telling us is that we don't get a significant bump in performance. When we go from a low timing and update that and program it to a high rate of timing for our setups. Now, realistically, you may not be all that concerned about efficiency because your motor has a lot of room for its temperature threshold. What you're ultimately interested in is speed. Are you gonna gain more? speed. So let's consider that this was a radio control car such as this Limitless here. Now this Limitless, if we got a much more RPM, obviously this is going to translate to more wheel speed. And with wheel speed, we can translate that into more top end speed. If we consider all of our dynos that we've done here today, we're seeing the biggest percentage difference there on our last dyno utilizing the EDF setup. Now what we're seeing there for performance is we're going from 34,488 to a 
bump to 34,960. This is going to provide you with a percentage difference of about 1.37. Now imagine if you're going 100 miles per hour with your setup and you want to make some sort of adjustment to allow you to gain more speed. What you do is you go from low timing, you set that to high timing. Now you're going to go 101.37 miles per hour. Obviously that is not a significant boost. What you'd more than likely want to do to gain more speed because you're going to accept more amounts of current going from 98 amps to 105 amps just to get that additional speed. You'd be better off by just changing a tooth count there on your pinion or spur gear. Now I'm willing to bet if you go up by one tooth on your typical and average setup on the pinion gear, you're going to see more of just a 1% bump in top speed. You're probably going to see that 7 amp difference or around like 6% difference in the total amount of current that you're going to see but you know to check the temperatures on the motor or the electronic speed control and the battery just to make sure that this is not a problem. What about the hardcore guys that are looking for every last drop in speed? Well, for you guys, you've probably already played around with your gearing, the KVs of the motor, and all the other parameters of your setup. You can absolutely adjust the timing and see if you get any sort of bump there to increase your top speed. Otherwise, for the rest of us, starting out with low amounts of timing is your best bet. You don't need to think about timing, just set it to low and make a run. You're probably not going to notice much of a difference by going from low to moderate or to high amounts of timing there. And for the guys that are a little bit interested in top speeds like myself, I might not be that hardcore about top speeds, but I definitely want to hit the highest that I can see. I am still running low amounts of timing, in fact, in every single one of my setups. For every single radio control, car or airplane or anything that you've seen on this channel, all those setups are operating with low amounts of timing and I'm seeing performance there gained by adjusting other other areas. If I really want to focus in on some specific radio control vehicle and bump the speed by a very small amount and I do have the freedom in temperature to do so, that's where I will make an adjustment to motor timing. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and this gives you some insight as to what to expect when you're manipulating and changing the timing. And if you don't know where to start, now you know where to start. Set that timing to low and make your runs. It's going to be that easy for you. Well guys, hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video. Don't forget to hit that sub button so I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.